The spiritual Baptists, better known as Shouter Baptists, have triumphed against tremendous odds. They have battled to gain recognition as a bona fide Christian religion and prejudice against their practices. In the midst of their struggles, they have conquered many hurdles. As they continue to strive for recognition and their proper place in the sun, their spiritual journey continues. We want to be like any other religion on the streets of the sea. Because it is very important for the people out there to accept the spiritual Baptist as part of the um, Christian fraternity and stop pointing fingers that um, we don't deserve to be pointed upon us, right? We are part of the Christian fraternity and um, we believe that we deserve that respect. God willing to call the blessed of us to divine of God, a young friend that you born this morning. Thank God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord. In the government offices, people don't consider if you go and say reverend so-and-so, they treat you like dog. They don't care about you. Why? Because your religion is of the grassroots, one, two, and because it's African people. So the people of Trinidad and Tobago, consider Baptists as nobody. We have to face these facts. If we don't face these facts, we won't be going nowhere. We want the people to know this and to let them know that the Baptist religion is like any other religion in this country. Shell and rush in the name of God the Father. The original Baptist settlers who came to Trinidad were black American soldiers. They were said to be former slaves who had fought for the British in the civil wars of North America in the early 19th century. They could not stay in America and they had to find somewhere to go. So the, the British were appealed to and um, the British were prepared to take them to different, anywhere that would accept them. And then Woodford, who was the chief man here, the governor, he said he would be glad to have a few thousands of them. And so what happened was uh, they sent up the captain of the British fleet in the Caribbean to bring down these people down here. Six companies came, six companies actually arrived, and they were settled just east of Princess Down because Woodford really wanted to get people who would open up the interior and especially to open a road to the east coast. So he put them east of Princeton in the dense jungles. In compensation for their war efforts, they were given lands on which to settle and start a new life. They came to a place around Princess Town now called the Company of Villages. Years later, the, the Shouter Baptists now, which was born from, well, how was it born? It, it was developed in the Caribbean, and it is said, it is said that it was developed among Yoruba slaves who, tired of having the various versions of Christianity thrust upon them, turned to their own myths and rituals, you know, familiar beliefs. And it spread then, and, it, and it, when it came to Trinidad, of course, Trinidad being a highly Roman Catholic country, it was somewhat colored by the Roman Catholic faith. And it took roots like that and, of course, got strong. Even as they carved out roads and built dwelling places, they continued to meet and practice their religion. Well, they bring their, their religion with them. They, so they used to worship. Our ancestors used to worship in Africa in that way. And they brought it into this land. And then it passed on and on and on to generation after generation. Indeed, it is said that the first Baptist church was started in the Fifth Company. As early as 1939, Melville and Francis Huskovitz visited Trinidad 
and did field work on, among the shouters. They were looking for Africanisms or African retentions and so on. Then later on you have Will Lovelace who describes the shouters as our first indigenous religion. Alfreda Parks, American anthropologist, also sees it as a, an indigenous religion. In my work, I see it as an indigenous religion with a folk cultural dimension as well as a religious dimension of folk culture. So the term indigenous, as used in this context, implies developing naturally in a particular environment, a particular cultural environment. In this case, Trinidad. In Trinidad and Tobago, it is believed that two sects emerge, the independent Baptists and the spiritual shelter Baptists, which although founded on the basic tenets of Christianity, fought to retain the African tradition in their worship. There are those that are just Baptists and those that are the shelter Baptists. No, the Baptists, they were not banned. They were free to practice. Is the spiritual Baptist shouters that was banned say that it was making funny songs? The spiritual Baptist consists of more African than any other sect in the, in the country. The word Baptist came from John the Baptist in the Bible. And if you observe that people treat John in his day like nobody, the Jews and them didn't care about him. Same way today, the people don't care about us. But if you observe something, when a destruction about to come in the land, the person you're seeing with a bell is a Baptist man walking and say it will have earthquake or it will have storm or something. And a few months after you see it take place. This makes us know truly the Baptist people is God people. Whether you accept it or not, they have something and God has directed them. The Baptist doctrine is a blend of the Old and New Testaments. Over the years, its rituals have been influenced by African and Roman Catholic tradition. Today, it is undeniably a powerful and distinct Christian religion. Remember, you were dealing with a religious group that was considered, as Don Yoda would put it, Nebian Kushlish, apart and beside the, the, the Orthodox religion. So you find that they didn't fit into the Orthodox approach to religion as obtained in Trinidad at that time, which was mainly Roman Catholic and, and Anglican. If one does not receive Jesus Christ through water baptism, this is repentance and believing on Jesus Christ as Lord and accepting him by water baptism, according to the Bible, you cannot enter into God's kingdom. And that is the firm belief of the spiritual Baptist. Every Baptist has to go through the mono room. You fast to break down this mortal body, to bring it under the subjection of the will of God. And uh, you pray to build a spiritual body. Because again from the scripture, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So the body goes through this rigid um, exercise, being denied from everything that it normally will have. And um, the mona seeks more the things that is above rather than the things that is on earth. He does not seek riches nor wealth, but knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. These practices have always been viewed with some skepticism. The spiritual Baptist, in his worship, when he worshiped, he, he worshiped it with all his heart and his soul, and, you know, he feels free, and if the spirit moves that he should um, speak in tongues, he speak in tongues, and people will get confused about that and the figure, well, um, this is a sort of gibberish business and this has to be the devil. But the person gives his life, heart and soul, free, and move as he is moved by the Holy 
spirit and um, this causes people to um, to have a sort of feeling that creates a sort of stigma against the spiritual Baptist people. can understand why we were shouting so and say we make a noise they call it noise we are making in 1917 the shouters were banned from practicing their religion now if the spiritual battles was only praying the, the, the law in those days would not have given them no case but when they get in the spirit and they start to shout it make a hell of a noise and the law said they're disturbing the peace. This is why the bill was placed up, the ban was placed upon the Baptists. The law that made the activities of the shelters illegal was known as the ordinance to render illegal indulgence in the practice of the body known as shelters. The law was more popularly known as the shelters prohibition ordinance. As a young man, I was going to a church in 7th Avenue, Lavantel, in the hilly areas. And there this woman, knowing me as a young man going to the church, hailed out to me and called me to her home and said, the police up there reading the church. And she took me into her home and hid me under the bed. To find that I was so young to get into this problem of police and persecution. However, after many raids and various incidents that took place, that I, to say the least, was um, inhuman, iniquitous, and wicked. And I would say the least, I have traveled one or two countries, and I would say that the infamous Shouters Prohibition Act is the greatest evil that was ever perpetrated against people in an English speaking Caribbean country. I mean, those days, the police used to run us. So when we have to perform that work, we have to go in a place they call Salibe inside the wilderness. Well, it had a certain time we perform a baptism right here, in a, just around the corner there, in a house, because we had no church. And police came and raided 26 of us carry us up to the courthouse in Toku. My first offense was five shillings. The person that gave the house, which was one mother, Goodridge, we hadn't a church at the time, and she gave the house for keeping the meeting. Well, it's there he, the police arrest us. And when he arrest us, he gave her three charges, giving a house, attending the meeting, and disturbing the police on duty. We pay the arm charge, and who remain to take the jail, they take jail. The splinter group in the spiritual Baptist faith started since in slavery, when each leader had to run to and secure himself with some of his people. So they come as his tribe. He is the leader for that. And since we emerge in, out of from our ancestors, you will find a little church here, a little shrine here, and a leader controlling his group. But for the Shouter Baptists, there was life and there was hope. To the relief of many believers and followers of the faith, there came a man whom the Baptists believe God had chosen and glorified by giving him the strength to run the race and to fight and wrestle like the prophet Jacob, never to let go till thou bless his waiting soul to release the shelter Baptists from legal constraints. Archbishop Elton George Griffith 
was then a deacon. And he made a petition along with other faithfuls of the Baptist Church to the then governor for the repealing of the Shouters Rehabilitation Act. In 1946, the then governor secured ranch. It took them one, over one year, before a reply was heard. And that according to um, Tubal Rebiral Butler, speaking on the bill in parliament for the repealing, said that he uh, is very happy to see that at long last, the perpetrators of this evil are themselves seeking to remove the evil that they have created. For more than four years, Bishop Griffith led a group of petitioners in an effort to have the Shouters Prohibition Ordinance repealed. The group included Pastor Brown, Richard Oliver Bob, R. H. Phillips, the Honorable L. C. Hannes, Albert Gomes, and the Honorable Victor Bryan. The committee was set up by the then governor, Sir Hubert Rance. And the basis, uh, the terms of reference was that the, the people are very noisy, they are immoral, and they um, are not of uh, uh, standards that are uh, uh, acceptable standards that we are accustomed to. A, B, and C clause referring to immorality, noisiness, disturbance, and so on. And that this committee was set up and the committee's report stated that they have not found any such thing as mentioned in the act. And as such, they have no recourse but to recommend that this, the act, be removed from the statute book of this country. On March 30th, 1951, the Shouters Prohibition Ordinance was repealed and the Shouter Baptists were free at last to practice their worship without fear of reprisals or arrests. This marked the first milestone. On March 30th, 1981, to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the repeal of the Shelter Prohibition Ordinance, a service was to be held in the Jean Pierre complex. But that service took a different complexion. Just before the start of the ceremonies, the announcement came that the Right Honorable Prime Minister Eric Williams had passed away. I do not know if the successors who are going to take over will grant us the privilege that the United Nations sign the Charter of Freedom of Religion. The spiritual Baptists or shouters continued on their spiritual journey and the struggle to find their rightful place alongside other religions in Trinidad and Tobago continued. It was in that context that the struggle for a public holiday began. The late Prime Minister, Dr. Eric Williams, had promised the spiritual Baptist a public holiday. But as the shouters explained, he died leaving the apply to his successors. Relentlessly, the struggle for a public holiday continued. Subsequent Prime Ministers were appealed to as the relentless fight for recognition continued and it was Senator Archbishop Burke who publicly cried out for help. No country conscious of its history could allow such an important event and the consequence for its people to pass in oblivion for more than 40 years 
the spiritual Baptist community has commemorated the repeal of the shelter prohibition ordinance. We will not let it. No, we cannot allow this most painful event to be lost to our people in the next few decades. And our government should be even more mindful of this. Outside of the emancipation of slaves in 1834, there is no other single event which carries greater significance than this day, March 30th, to the African community. On January 26, 1996, the government of Trinidad and Tobago granted a public holiday on the day of liberation of the Shouter Baptists, the 30th of March. The Prime Minister met on Friday, January 19, 1996, with the Council of Elders of the Spiritual Baptist Shouters of Trinidad and Tobago, at which the question of the designation of a public holiday was discussed, the holiday to be known as the Spiritual Baptist Shouter Liberation Day, and that the day be March 30th. Commencing in 1996, March 30th of each year will be appointed a public holiday to be known as the Spiritual Baptist Liberation Shouter Day in recognition of the repeal of the 1917 Shouters Prohibition Ordinance on March 30th, 1951. This, indeed, was the second milestone. Jesus, have blessed me for you, Lord. Hello. Take charge of him, Lord. Yeah. Come on, his defense is here. Yeah. Even not to himself, Lord. Oh. But Lord, wash him unto him, Lord. Oh, yeah. As I purge him in his heart. Yeah. Wash him thoroughly from all his iniquity. Yeah. Yeah. We knew the white will retain him. Yeah. Cast him not away from that, yeah. brother. Take not the Holy Spirit away. Yeah. But respond to him. Oh. That joy of his heart. Yeah. My boy. Oh. The liberation day, Lord. Oh. The holiday, Lord. Oh. All those that Lord, I bring the Congress, Lord. Place them before your Father of Rose. And these as we once have prayer. You show our Jesus. You know me heart desire, Lord. You know bless our Jesus. But I want to tell you, Lord. But I say, Jesus, take charge, Lord. That should be your hand, Lord. Direct your course, Lord. For the shelter Baptists, there is still much to rejoice about. And here in San Fernando, as part of the liberation celebration, devotees marched to a place called Carib Square, where an obelisk was unveiled. To the spiritual of Shelter Baptists, the spiritual journey continues. To those who were part of the pioneering process and to their followers, two milestones have been overcome. But there is still one last milestone, one more river to cross. The unification of the spiritual shelter Baptist. And we have been dialogue to bring all the groups under one heading. So we can say that we have one people with one understanding. Why we have to do this most of all is because we need to come together that we can receive lands and different amenities that we can continue our faith. And we pray that God will help us to get these things that we need. The spiritual Baptists have come a long way in their journey. They have been resilient and strong. They have kept their faith and overcome trials with fortitude. The writer O Loveless, who has written passionately and beautifully about the Baptists in our midst, has made this biblical quotation synonymous with their long struggles and hard-won triumphs. Thou has made thy people see hard things. Thou has made us to drink the wine of astonishment. With this third milestone, unity, the one that is yet to come, the Baptist faith promises to grow from strength to strength. Oh,